There are a lot of unknowns right now when it comes to the Halo franchise, Halo Studios, and the multiple games currently in the works when it comes to this franchise. In a completely new switch to Unreal Engine, people are just like, what's happening to my Halo? You know, because uh, we all love this franchise. It, you know, it's part of our, not, it's more than just a game to us, all right? It's like part of our DNA, almost like our a lifestyle almost. So we want to make sure that our favorite franchise is taken good care of. Right. And so I wanted to see like what your guys were thinking when it comes to the recent information about uh, all this stuff when it comes to Halo. Cause it was a big news drop. I mean, like pretty freaking huge. And well, I reached out to you guys about it with in a QA uh, feed here on the YouTube channel. If you guys want to cash these next time it goes live, I post these regularly when I ask the community, what do you guys want to know more about? I like I just subscribe and catch these community posts when they do go live. So I figured I'd go through some of the top comments on here. And if you guys want to see more content like this, let me just tap like, subscribe, and all that kind of stuff. So let's we'll just dive right into it right now. So the one of the top rated comments from Mildros, friend of the channel here, appreciate the returning here, saying, Will we return to an M rating like classic Halos? I wish and doubt. <laughs> and I do feel like there is certainly something there when it comes to uh, an M rated game, right? You can touch on certain type of uh, topics and obviously much more than just like the gore and all that kind of stuff, right? Which is something I think is a big thing. I don't know a lot of people cite the flood being the reason why uh, we had an M rated Halo game to begin with. But if you guys don't know, Halo was originally rated T, like Halo Combat Evolved was originally rated T. This right here is an image taken before the release of Combat of all the from one of the books. I believe this must have been uh, the Fall of Reach. You can see in the lower left hand corner here, rated T for violence, blood and gore. But a lot of people will hear that like the flood was the main reason why the M rating came around for Halo. But the flood were not in Halo Reach. And that game was rated M. The flood wasn't in ODST. That game was also rated M. Though I've never really felt that the Halo franchise as a whole is a M rated game. Like yeah, there are guns, they're shooting. There's a, there's blood involved with it. As you can see like in Reach, there's like little blood splatters from like aliens and stuff like that. But it's not ever really been like a gory game or a game that really touched on or showcased any kind of gory subjects or any kind of like subject matter that would entail something that would be much more of an m-rated experience i mean like think of like grand theft auto right some pretty you know mature content within that game some mature language as well and like halo never really had that kind of coarse language before and also think of like games like gears of war where like there's body parts dismemberment all over the place like yeah blood gut splashing on your screen over the top kind of macho man goriness like you're like, yeah, that's a rated M game, but that's not what Halo is. And I think that the M rating for Halo is much more of a traditional rating back in the day where like if your game was just like a shooter at all, you would be rated M back in the early 2000s because, you know, gaming was uh, a little bit more, uh, I guess, a like cleaner back in the day, if that's the way to put it. I'm not quite sure exactly how to phrase it, but like basically if your game was featuring you shooting guns, you would be rated M pretty much automatically. But you know, times have moved on. We have games like Fortnite and Destiny and the most recent Halo games, right? Being rated T for making a broader audience appeal. And there's no really big ESRP issues with that. And also Halo Wars 2 with the Waking the Nightmare DLC. This game is still rated T. So it's not really the flood why the game was rated M. I think it was more just like a legacy rating. And I don't really feel like it landed. I don't think Halo really landed itself to being like a much more of a mature game compared to any other games out there right now. Especially nowadays where yeah, games... They can get pretty, uh, pretty, you know, rough to watch sometimes. So does Halo need to be rated M for it to be feeling like a Halo game? I don't think so. Now this one's a little double header on the questions here because I feel like they kind of touch on the same type of subject here. That being from Kevin Buckley saying, will it return to its military sci-fi roots like the original trilogy? And also the Muscle Peter, Muscle Peter for Vanessa correctly, correctly. So what do you think about the new art style and the effects which come with the new engine? In general, I like it pretty much, but the new Chief does look a bit bulky and kind of toy-like. I have a feeling that the art style for most of this is gonna be pretty much touching on what they really try to do when it comes to Halo Infinite, where it's gonna be trying to call back to the classic art style of Halo 
but then also maybe push it in a new direction to kind of update it a little bit, or at least add some more polygons compared to Combat Evolved, right? I mean, that's the problem with, like, Infinite and switching off of it, was that, like, there were so many things that were done right in Infinite to then just switch off of it because of the engine and tech issues that came with it. Uh, it felt like it was like, well, how do you try to replicate that same feeling without just straight up copying it? And that one way would be potentially this CE remake that we hear keeping here rumors about, right? But it would kind of forward a little bit here so I can talk, talk about like what the, he was talking about like when it comes to like the plasticky kind of look when it came to some of the character models within this uh, reveal trailer. I think that plasticky kind of look comes a lot from the lighting and importing these assets from Halo Infinite into the Unreal Engine. And I don't really feel like this was these models were strictly made for Unreal, so I think the lighting might interact a little oddly. That you can see how the lighting on the sword, how it illuminates Master Chief in this image that I created here, but I kind of brightened it up a little bit so you can kind of see some more uh, details about how the lighting actually interacts with the character. But you can see how, like, right here on the gauntlet on the arms, how there really isn't much in the way of like shadowing from the gauntlet itself interacting onto the character and how the lighting does look a little unrealistic and i think it mainly it comes from just being an import from halo infinite and then put into uh, the unreal engine and also being a more of a not sort of a demo like i've said previously but much more of a example of what can be done right and not ironing out these little tiny details when it comes to you know exactly how the game looks except for the environments i think also the way that the characters are posed within this i would just call it more of an interactive diorama if anything it just doesn't really come off that natural or like it doesn't really seem like it would be like a situation that you would see in then if you freeze if you froze a frame of gameplay when it came to playing halo same kind of thing if we're looking at an example of this scene right here where like you had like the default lens flares that are within the Unreal Engine kind of showcasing right here. And also just like the way it looks like he, like the lead's kind of swinging through, but it doesn't really look like that natural. And like, why is Master Chief kind of like looking away a little bit and not trying to shoot this elite? Like, I think it just kind of looked a little unnatural when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I think also some of the motions of the way the characters moved didn't really come off that believable, I guess is the way to put it really. Uh, especially at the end of the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, the New Dawn trailer here. You can see that where Master Chief kind of like does like his little animation, sword animation swing deal here. And it just didn't really look like that fluid. I don't think that maybe they have like a full team of animators that would really be able to put it all together. It looked really kind of rigid and kind of like temporary. Kind of, I don't know, it just didn't really feel like a fully, you know, animated, well, well-designed kind of experience. Thing we would see looks pretty basic like if you're a guy if you're a person who can just do some basic animation like hey can we get like a sword swing animation from master chief for this trailer as well and people are like uh yeah i can kind of like dust off the cobwebs and kind of put it back together it looked very freeze framey right definitely keyframe not uh, like mo capped or anything like that squiggly squid asks will we finally get playable elites back oh man that is a question i keep seeing all over and over and over again i asked this question over at uh, hts we're recording some of the short form videos and everyone but well, actually i shouldn't say everyone i'm almost about 95 percent people like yes we want playable elites back but i, I just I don't know if it's something that can be done, right? The big issue when it comes to slip space was just making stuff for the engine and you know adding more customization for a smaller percentage of people who would actually utilize it. You know, 343 or at the time, now Halo Studios just kind of looked at it as, you know what, it's just not really worth the time and resources to make the elite armors when we're just barely getting by for enough armor customization when it comes to your Spartan armor, which I would say about 85% of players would utilize the Spartan armor set. So I don't know, like, and also, you know, there is that legacy of like the hitbox is being kind of weird. The heads being in a different position compared to a Spartan when it came to like Halo 2 and Halo 3, especially. And like I talked about this in the previous video with like Halo Reach, what did a great job of making the difference between elites and Spartans like an actual thing but then playing into those differences as well. Personally, I don't want to see playable leads come back in Halo Infinite. Uh, I feel like it's not necessarily like wasted dev time, 
but I feel like that time could be spent doing better things. And also I just don't like the inconsistency of the character models when it comes to being in your gunfights. Unless it's Invasion, then it's awesome. Tommy the Sparta asks, what do you think Halo Studios will take influence from Halo Infinite? Because they're, while not perfect, there were certainly aspects of Halo Infinite that they did very well when it came to like weapon design, audio, campaign even, and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm curious, like, again, like I've talked about this in previous videos, like a lot of people generally agree that Halo Infinite's gameplay was very well received and people liked it a lot and myself included. I've had a ton of fun playing Halo Infinite and I still do have a lot of fun playing Halo Infinite right now. But the thing is that like when you're making a new game, right, when it comes to the user end experience, right, if you just copy and pasted Halo Infinite's gameplay experience, into whatever the new Halo game is, a lot of people will just be like, well, why didn't you just make Halo Infinite this way instead? And you know, a lot of people I'm sure wouldn't really fully understand like, oh, it was Unreal Engine, a lot of tech deck, tech debt when it came to the slow space engine and all that kind of stuff. It's a lot of behind the sign behind the scenes kind of stuff that maybe a casual player wouldn't really exactly notice, but maybe an enthusiast gamer, people who watch YouTube videos and things like that, would understand why the change actually happened. So I'm curious, like if you use utilize the base of Halo Infinite as like what you would base your multiplayer off of, but how do you change that in a way to make it so it's not just Halo Infinite, but in an Unreal Engine? Because if that was the case, your casual player would just be like, this looks dumb. Why don't you just support Infinite instead? And you know, that's the same thing we talked about previously on the channel when it came to like up to Halo 3 to Reach, right? Like if Reach came out and it was just like Halo 3.5, just some new maps and a new campaign, People would actually be upset, like, why are you charging me $60 when I can just play Halo 3 right now? So I'm worried about that aspect of it because I, but there are a lot of great things Infinite did do. And I think they should carry over like one, like I said, the gameplay, the art style is fantastic. The vibes and the audio is incredible. It's new, refreshing, but also calls back to the legacy of Halo. There are just so many things that they could do and so many artistic choices that need to be made when it comes to the next Halo game to see like what do they carry over and what do they completely redo. Because Halo Infinite was great, I wish we had the Halo Infinite as an actual live service, it's just that the engine just doesn't function for it. Lucifer Vanity asks, imagine what Halo 3 or Reach assets would look like in Unreal Engine 5. But what if I told you? You didn't have to think hard for that. Because in the Master Chief Collection right here, you can actually see what Halo assets look like in the Unreal Engine. You go to Options, you go to Customization here, you go to Halo 3. This is what the Unreal Engine actually looks like when you import models into it. Let me remove my, uh, my face cam here so you can see what I'm talking about. This is what Halo 3 armor would look like in Unreal Engine. This is what they utilize for all the UI elements within the Master Chief Collection. So this is why sometimes when you're looking at customization within Master Chief Collection, it looks awesome in here, but once you go into the actual game, not so much. Uh, the perfect example I can showcase to you guys right here would be say like this assault rifle. If I go with like the golden coating right here, right? Look how awesome that looks, right? It's all shiny and gold and just like reflects in the sunlight and stuff like that. Like Unreal Engine really does a great job of putting this in a higher fidelity and also really giving you like that real time reflection stuff, which just looks absolutely incredible. But once you go in game with it, it's a, a different story. Like, yeah, there is a little bit more of a reflection when it comes to the material, but yeah, with the way uh, the LAM engine did lighting back in Halo 3 days, you can kind of see the difference right there when it comes to the quality of lighting and the graphics. And like, honestly, like lighting is actually a very big thing when it comes to how well a game looks. Really just anything in general actually looks. Like lighting is really about like, I feel like it's about 85% of what makes things look really nice. But here's an example I found online of someone who like imported some aspects from Halo 3 into the Unreal Engine. Again, obviously this isn't like completely polished what you would expect to see for a Halo game but for just like a single person just doing a fun little project of importing some things in, you kind of get the idea of like what the lighting actually looks like and the way the reflections work within the game. Completely different than what we've seen previously. And yeah, Unreal has a huge potential to just make 
any game look absolutely incredible, uh, but it's really up to the developers of how they make it so that it's optimized so then people can actually get decent frame rates, stable performance and things like that. So all these things are fun little things that people can just play around with and make something crazy out of. But, uh, you know, they don't really keep like performance or gameplay uh, enhancements or response times in mind. So this is kind of more like the high end of what you could expect to see, like what Unreal could do uh, if it was Halo 3 specifically, but definitely pretty awesome. So you guys made it this far into the video. Well, I appreciate you watching. If you guys want to show who the real ones are out there in the chat, leave a green heart in the comments. I'll see you guys. I see you guys out there. And hopefully if you guys enjoyed the video, I earned your like and subscribe possibly. Uh, but stay tuned for more Halo content. Catch all your videos from me recently. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.